In this video, we're going to take a look at non-permissible values in rational functions. In particular, we're going to take a look at the point of discontinuity. Now, when we graph a rational function, and the non-permissible value can result in one of two features on the graph. First, it can result in a vertical asymptote. or a point of discontinuity. Now you've taken a look at vertical asymptotes before, so we're going to concentrate on point of discontinuity in this video. So a point of discontinuity, um, it's a point, x and y are the coordinates, at which the graph of a function is not continuous. So what that means is when I'm drawing the graph, I'm going to lift my pen up, and then I have to keep going. So there's a gap um, in the graph. Now it occurs in a graph of a rational function uh, when the function can be simplified by dividing the numerator and the denominator by a common factor. That contains a variable. Uh, the result uh, is a single point missing from the graph and we represent it by an open circle. Now it's sometimes referred to as a hole in the graph. So let's take a look at an example. So I want to sketch the graph of the function uh, that's written here, and we're going to analyze its behavior near its non-permissible value. So from the equation, we can see that x plus 2 can't equal 0, so x can't equal negative 2. So that's what its non-permissible value is. Now if I take the function and I take the numerator, I can see that I can factor it. So I'm going to actually factor the numerator to become x minus 3 and x plus 2. Now this is really nice because when I do this, I can see that my x plus 2 is in the numerator and the denominator can cancel off, so I'm actually only left with x minus 3. Now remember that x can't equal negative 2. Now that's based on the original question. So when I look at the uh, denominator, x can't equal negative 2. However, when I now plug the negative 2 into this new function, which I have reduce, I will have negative 5. So, at the point negative 2, it will give me a point negative 5. Now, let me graph this rational function, but I can actually simply graph the line because I've actually um, canceled off the x plus 2 binomial, and I've reduced it down to a line. So, um, to graph this, we plot our y-intercept from negative 3, and then we have a slope of 1. So I'm just going to graph all these points here. And I'm going to connect all the points. Now I need to do one extra thing. Because from my original function, I said that x can't equal negative 2. So if I go to negative 2 on my graph, that gives me a point of negative 5, which is exactly what I had written here when I calculated by plugging in the negative 2 into the linear function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an open circle or draw a circle around negative 2, negative 5. So the graph of f of x is the same as the graph of f of x equal to x minus 3 except that f of x is a point of discontinuity at negative 2 and right now I'm going to call it y. So let's say we didn't know what it was. So even though um, the x plus 2 factor is removed in the denominator, after simplifying, the original function had the factor. Okay. So to determine the y-coordinate of the point of discontinuity, so let's say that it didn't have the graph, we can substitute x equals negative 2 into the simplified equation, which is this one here. Okay, then the function f of x will have a point of discontinuity at 
negative 2, negative 5. And we say that f of x does not exist at x equal to negative 2. Now, if we draw the graph, we can also see that at the point of x equals negative 2, and we follow this along, actually there is that point negative 5. So that's actually another way that we can find the y value. So we can do this algebraically, but then we can also do this graphically. Now I'm going to show you one more way that we can take a look at this. So we have the algebra, we have the graph, and now I'm going to do a table analysis. So what I'm going to do is I have this table that has 11 boxes, and I'm going to start at negative 2.5, and I'm also going to start at negative 1.5. So what's happening is I want to know what happens as x gets closer and closer to negative 2, or we can say that as x approaches negative 2, from the left side and also from the right side. So what I would do is I would plug in negative 2.5, negative 2.2, negative 2.1, negative 2.01, negative 2.001. From the right side, I would plug in negative 5, negative 1.8, negative 1.9, negative 1.99, and negative 1.999. Now these are arbitrary values that I'm choosing. You don't have to always pick the same numbers. But what I'm trying to show you is that as I pick numbers that are further away from negative 2, from the left side and the right side, but then I get closer and closer to negative 2, which is in the middle here, we want to know what's happening. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the negative 2.5, and when I substitute this, I actually want to substitute back into the original question. The original question being the x squared minus x minus 6, all divided by x plus 2. Now, when I do do the substitution, I'm going to just fill this in. So I've now filled in the table of values um, with my corresponding y values to the x. And I know that at negative 2, it does not exist. So I'm going to write does not exists because I'm going to have zero in the denominator. However, according to my table, I can see that from the left and from the right, the numbers seem to be getting very close to the number negative 5, which again coincides with what I got algebraically, which I calculated up here, and then also what I got on the graph.